so hello everyone I hope that you're doing just fine and that you're absolutely ready for our new chapter so this video is gonna be dedicated to fats and lipids and we are gonna talk a little bit about the basic structure and classification and physical chemical properties of lipid molecules in our body so in order to start let's make some kind of general information some kind of general notes regarding the group of lipid molecules we can say for the beginning that lipids are really important and widespread biomolecules in nature and of course in human organism but the group of lipid molecules actually include a large number of different compounds a large number of different molecules a large number of complexes with rather different structures and composition and thus pr probably exhibiting a wide range of different functions but and some of them of course are like three acyl glycerols or three glycerates which is uh, the wrong name but it's still often used in medical practice than cholesterol phospholipids sphingolipids probably you have already heard about some of these compounds but we have uh, some kind of a problem or issue here regarding uh, the uh, definition of lipids so we cannot perform the same pattern as we did for some other uh, biomolecules we said for example that proteins are polymers of amino acids or complex carbs are polymers of simple monosaccharides or nucleic acids are polymers of nucleotides and so on uh, in the case of lipid group of molecules we cannot say anything like that so it is impossible to, f to define this class of biomolecules in a similar manner because we cannot find the specific building brick the specific basic structure by uh, which can form more complex structures by polymerization so this pattern is not valid for lipids so people have decided and agreed that the group of lipids should be defined according to the common characteristic of all lipid molecules and that common characteristic is that lipids are highly nonpolar molecules uh, which means that those are molecules which are insoluble in water or we say they are hydrophobic molecules but those are molecules which are soluble in nonpolar organic solvents like ether chloroform benzene and hexane and so on and so on so what are the functions of lipids in living organisms so there are numerous of important functions and i have picked up just some of those to illustrate the variety of the group so they are the basic structural part of cell membranes and this is something that we all know so uh, they are involved in that uh, lipid B layer of each membrane uh, not only cell membrane but organelle membranes as well also the things that comes to our mind in the second place or in the first place is that they represent the long-term energy source which means that by their degradation our cells are supplied by a huge amount of energy and I think that they're not a thing but they are the best energy source in our organism and we get much more energy from the degradation of lipids than from the degradation of carbs but we will discuss that in details uh, in the chapter on metabolism further on they are also important precursors for the synthesis of certain hormones and bile acids and salts so uh, starting from cholesterol for example numerous steroid hormones are synthesized like uh, sex hormones like corticosteroids and so on bile acids and salts which are important for the digestion of lipids are also synthesized from uh, cholesterol so they also tend to form very specific lipoprotein particles which are found in our blood 
and those particles are of great medical importance and we're going to have the separate lecture and the separate video describing the basic properties and further the video describing the metabolism of those lipoprotein particles. So lipid structure is also found in and is common for several vitamins, for example, like vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and those are necessary for the proper function of our metabolism. Lipids are also involved in uh, our body's thermal isolation, and there are also very good electrical isolators and a number of other functions. We could continue the list. So, but what is important to emphasize here that every single organism, each organism has actually a certain storage amount of lipids, a reservoir of lipids, which is located in fatty or adipose tissue. So how can lipids be classified? Uh, they can be classified according to the chemical structure, according to the complexity, according to the origin, according to the biological role. Uh, and I have chosen here to uh, give you the classification according to the chemical structure, which I uh, actually found, find uh, the most illustrative of all. So according to the chemical structure, uh, all lipids can be classified in two groups, in simple lipids and complex lipids. And some authors, if you're using some textbooks and outsources, uh, some authors say that complex lipids are those lipid molecules which contain minimum one ester bond in the structure. And there is a reason for that, we will see. We will see it and prove it shortly. So, simple lipids, and the name says for itself, are lipids and molecules which do not undergo further degradation to something more simple. I mean, they do not undergo hydrolysis to form more simple molecules. That hydrolysis often occur in alkaline medium from sodium or potassium hydroxide. And in the group of simple lipids, we will mention fatty acids and we will mention isoprene derivatives, uh, molecules which are marked as terpenoids, and steroid hormone uh, and steroid molecules and uh, out of which we're gonna uh, focus and explain in, in a little bit more details uh, the molecule of cholesterol. The second group complex lipids are as expected are molecules which can be degraded or which can be hydrolyzed to give more simple molecules. So in the group of complex lipids ester bonds which are found in the structure of those molecules can be hydrolyzed or broken down by the action of al alkalis like sodium or potassium hydroxide to produce the components of that molecule, predominantly salts of fatty acids and certain alcohols. Because of the fact that the products which are formed upon the hydrolysis are sodium or potassium salts of fatty acids, or in other words, soaps are products of this process, this process is also marked as saponification. In this group of complex lipids, uh, we have several groups and classes, 3-acylglycerols or 3-glycerates, phospholipids, sphingolipids, and many, many other. So let's start with simple lipids and the first are fatty acids. So they are important components of those complex lipids. So we will find fatty acids in each and every complex lipid. They are nothing else but organic acids. So the functional group which is found in their structure is carboxyl group. Apart from this COOH group, they contain a shorter or a longer chain, uh, with a hydrocarbon chain, which is composed of carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms only. They also may have one or more double bonds in the structure, so one, two, three, four, and so on. And human fatty acids usually have 
even number of carbon atoms like 16, 18, 20, 22, 24 and so on. Fatty acids can be classified in two groups as saturated fatty acids, which contain only single bonds in the structure, and unsaturated fatty acids, which contain one or more uh, double or we say unsaturated bonds in the structure. So let's list some of the examples. Some students uh, find, uh, I don't know why, but they find unnecessary to make a list and make an examples of the most famous and the most abundant fatty acids, which is absolutely wrong. So this is something important. This is something that you should know. So please memorize these facts like number of carbon atoms, number of double bonds, position of double bonds, and so on for the upcoming list of fatty acids. So saturated fatty acids, which are commonly found in our complex lipids, are palmitic acid and stearic acid. Palmitic acid has 16 carbon atoms in the structure and stearic acid has 18 carbon atoms in the structure. They are solid substances and actually despite the fact that they contain carboxyl group, which if you remember our organic chemistry course is a polar group, the solubility in water significantly decreases with the increase of the number of carbon atoms. So, palmitic and stearic acid are literally not soluble in water. Uh, if you want to write down the structure of a fatty acid, you can use different ways of writing the formula. So, you can use those uh, common rational formulas. And, for example, palmitic acid can be presented at CH3, CH2 14 times COOH, emphasizing that there are 16 carbon atoms and all single bonds in the structure. But sometimes fatty acids are commonly uh, written in the form of a zigzag line indicating the actual uh, structure in space of these fatty acids. But in order to rationalize the space which is needed to write uh, such a structure, uh, palmitic, uh, fatty acids like palmitic acid here are represented only by the zigzag line indicating the first carbon atom carrying the carboxyl function and the last 16th carbon atom. And of course, if there are uh, double bonds, then the positions of double bonds. And in the same way, you have here presented a structure of stearic acid, so all single bonds, a zigzag line, and 18 carbon atoms. Uh, there are as many zigzags, as many carbon atoms are there. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on, till number 18 in, in this case. Uh, unsaturated fatty acids are those containing either one double bond and called monounsaturated fatty acid or more double bonds when they are marked as polyunsaturated fatty acids. And I have provided you with a couple of important examples. So the first one, and here are the structures of those, and you, you will see the review in the next slide. Uh, so palmitoleic acid it contains and it has 16 carbon atoms and one double bond at the position number 9. So this is an overview and let's move on. Oleic acid is the second one, very important, very popular, famous. So 18 carbon atoms and one double bond at the position number 9. Let's move on to linoleic acid, 18 carbon atoms and two double bonds at C9 and C12. And you can notice the pattern that often the first double bond is at the position number 9 and the second bond you will see the following example as well is at the position number 12. But it's not necessarily always the case but most oftenly. Then we have linolenic acid which contains 18 carbon atoms and three double bonds. And if you can see, we have two subgroups or two types of linolenic acid. And which are those? The first one has 18 carbon atoms, which is uh, not a problem. But we have three double bonds at C9, C12 and C15. 
this variety and this version of L uh, linoleic acid is marked as alpha linolenic acid and uh, it's I think it's much more famous by uh, its common name its trivial name which is omega-3 fatty acids which are so valuable for the promotion of our health the second version also important for us is the one also containing 18 carbon atoms three double bonds it's not a problem but one of the bonds from the position 15 is switched to the position 6 here so we have gamma linolenic acid or omega-6 uh, which is predominantly found in plant oils uh, omega-3 is predominantly found in animal oils and fats uh, in animal oils uh, Arachidonic acid is also one worth mentioning containing uh, 20 carbon atoms and four double bonds at C5, C8, C11 and C14 and arachidonic acid is worth mentioning because it's a precursor for the synthesis of prostaglandins from which immunoglobulins are synthesized like IgG, IgM and now there we are all know so much about them and we are all talking uh, so much about them du during this COVID-19 pandemic, pandemic so they play a crucial role in a proper functioning of the immune system and actually we're gonna discuss about these specific types of molecules which are immunologically active molecules in some other chapters in details and I would also mention nervonic acid containing 24 carbon atoms and one double bond and C15 as a uh, as a fatty acid found in nervous tissue so uh, like like the the thing that we uh, said for um, amino acids so human cells can synthesize some of these fatty acids uh, but of course there are some of those that which have to be taken through diet and those are marked as essential fatty acids like we said like we had essential amino acids uh, we have essential fatty acids. So, uh, which are fatty acids that can be synthesized by our body? Those are uns uh, those are saturated fatty acids and monounsaturated, like oleic acid. But those which are polyunsaturated, those are marked as essential fatty acids. So, linoleic and linolenic acid are essential acid and according to some authors but you will see that there are different claims in, in different sources arachidonic acid is considered to be an essential as well uh, unsaturated fatty acids are in liquid aggregate state due to the presence of a double bond and if you notice the figures and the structure of those, you, you could notice that all of those are in the cis configuration of a double bond. So those uh, predominant group, uh, hydrocarbon chain groups, are on the same side of the double bond, so they are of cis configuration. But if, for any reason, transconfiguration is found in the structure, for example, during the industrial procedure of hydrogenization of plant oils, during the production of margarines and so on, fatty acids are marked as trans fatty acids. And it is suggested, and there are a lot, there are significant number of results and research is suggesting that they represent a significant risk factor for the development of atherosclerosis due to the precipitation of fats in blood vessels. So you should avoid that in your diet. Uh, the next simple lipid worth uh, explaining and mentioning is cholesterol, very important for us. And it has a very characteristic steroid structure which represents the system of four condensed rings. So three six-membered rings and one five-membered rings. And this structure is marked as steran ring or cyclopentano perhydrophenone train ring. In the molecule of cholesterol, certain hydrogen atoms from this steran ring are substituted with some other atomic groups. So if you take a look at the figure on the right, and this is the structure of a molecule of cholesterol, we can notice some specificities. 
At the position number three, so at the third carbon atom, we have OH group. OH group actually is considered to be a polar group, but actually in the molecule of cholesterol, it is the mi of minor importance because the rest of the molecule, the steroid ring and the hydrocarbon chain attached to that steroid ring are so nonpolar that actually uh, the polar characteristics of this OH group cannot be emphasized and they are insignificant. Uh, moreover, uh, predominantly two-thirds of cholesterol for example in our blood are additionally esterified so this OH group is esterified with fatty acids so cholesterol esters are even more hydrophobic molecules than the cholesterol itself. What else do we have in the structure of cholesterol? We have a double bond in the position number five uh, at the positions number 10 and 13, we have additional methyl groups attached here, marked with numbers uh, 18 and 19. And at the position number 17, we have, as you can see, a hydrocarbon chain. So in total, the number of carbon atoms in the molecule of cholesterol is 27. Speaking of its physical chemical characteristics, Cholesterol is considered to be a white crystal substance, insoluble in water, soluble in all polar solvents, and optically active molecule. Moving on to complex lipids, I have already mentioned that 3-acylglycerols are definitely the most abundant, the most widespread lipid molecules, not only in humans, but in plants and animals as well. And most of the fats, actually, which are taken from the diet and the amount, the total amount is approximately 150 grams average, are actually TAGs, 3-acylglycerols. Uh, the chemical structure of 3-acylglycerols is um, defined as their esters of 3-hydroxyl alcohol glycerol and fatty acids. Of course, we have some variations. If only one OH group of uh, glycerol is esterified, then we have monoacyl glycerols. And if two OH groups are esterified, we have diacyl glycerols. And here you have the reaction of the formation of 3 acyl glycerol uh, represented in the figure. So glycerol with three OH groups um, undergo esterification with three fatty acids and we have the formation of an ester bond. So fatty acids which are found in TAGs can be same or they can be various. Uh, most often they are palmitic, stearic and oleic acid. The aggregate state of three acid glycerols actually depends on the fatty acids which are found in the structure. So the more saturated acids in the structure, they give solid fats like animal fats. And more unsaturated acids in the structure, they give liquid state, for example, plant oils. Then we have the group of phospholipids. Uh, they are considered to be esters of two types of alcohols, uh, glycerol, which we have already see, seen before, so they are named glycerophospholipids in that case, or instead of glycerol, we can have sphingosine, and then we are going to have sphingophospholipids. So, which are the major components of phospholipids? So, in the first place, we have fatty acids, so apart from the alcohol component, we have fatty acids, which are attached to the alcoholic group by ester bond. Then we have a phosphate group, which is attached to one of the alcohols mentioned above, also by the ester bond. And one other specific molecule, um, oftenly alcohol, not necessarily, but oftenly alcohol, attached to the phosphate group, again by ester bond. So here we have a lot, a lot, a lot of ester bond. And uh, in the next slide, I'm going to uh, give you uh, some examples of the most common uh, glycerophospholipids and sphingophospholipids. So one of the major role in general regarding phospholipids is formation of cell membranes. Uh, but they can also be found in our organism and body fluids and in bile uh, doing some other uh, things and some other activities. Uh, 
So let's start with glycerophospholipids. So they are derivatives of phosphatidic acid. So what is phosphatidic acid? So we have uh, alcohol glycerol here and two fatty acids attached uh, to the first and the second carbon atom. But the OH group from the third carbon atom uh, reacts with phosphoric acid forming phosphoester bond. So this part of the molecule is highly nonpolar and is marked as phosphatidic acid. And to phosphatidic acid, various and different molecules can be attached or bound. So we have different types of glycerophospholipids. So if choline is attached to phosphatidic acid, then we have phosphatidyl choline molecule or the common name which is uh, used more often is lecithine. Lecithine is the most widespread glycerophospholipid in cell membranes. Uh, it uh, represents the a state-of-the-art choline reservoir uh, which can be transformed to acetylcholine uh, which is involved in the transmission of nerve impulses. It's also a very potent emulgator and surfactant and it plays an important role for the maintenance of the normal lung functions by preventing agglutination. Then we have phosphatidic acid uh, to which ethanol amine is attached. So we have phosphatidyl ethanol amine or caffeine, or we have phosphatidic acid with serine attached, so it's phosphatidyl serine, and then we have phosphatidic acid attached to inositol, one sugar alcohol, so we have phosphoinositol. Phosphoinositol is a component of cell membranes, and inositol triphosphate is also marked as the second messenger in signal transmission and you will we will uh, mention uh, inositol triphosphate later again when we move on to metabolism and regulation of metabolism and second messengers and so on and so on and i have given you one more example which is cardiolipin or diphosphatidyl glycerol which which actually represents uh, one dimer of phosphatidic acid and cardiolipin is the major lipid of mitochondrial membranes and maybe the last example of glycerophospholipids uh, to mention here are plasmalogenes uh, which are uh, actually a separate group of glycerophospholipid with one structural characteristic Mm, they are similar to caffeine, but in the position C1 on the first carbon atom of glycerol, instead of an ester bond, uh, there is an ether bond. And those plasmalogenes actually represent 10% of phospholipids in brain and muscles. Moving on to sphingophospholipids, they contain alcohol sphingosine instead of glycerol. So you can see the structure of the most famous sphingophospholipid of all, and that is sphingomyelin, which is found in brain and nervous tissue. So it contains alcohol sphingosine, so you can see the structure here, and a fatty acid attached by an ester bond to the alcohol. Uh, sphingosine plus fatty acid, they give the structure which we call ceramide, which is found in glycolipids. And then uh, to another OH group, phosph of sphingosine or phosphate group is attached and then choline molecule attached to the phosphate group. So this is the complex structure of sphingomyelin. And finally, uh, glycolipids are actually complex molecules containing lipids and some carbohydrate molecules. Those glycolipids are widespread in all tissues, uh, especially huge amounts are found in nervous tissue and brain, and actually uh, they are positioned in the outer surface of cell membrane layer because of the carbohydrate moiety which is more polar. And we have several subgroups of glycolipids. Those are, for example, sphingoglycolipids or galactosyl ceramide, uh, which has a galacto galactose attached to ceramide group, which is a major glycolipid in brain, nervous tissue, and myelin. 
then glycosyl ceramide, which is found in other tissues, and gangliosides, which is actually formed uh, by the attachment of an acetyl neuramic acid or acetylenic acid is the common name with ceramide, again in the nervous tissue, and it has a, a role of the receptor. And for, for, to, for the final, so let's, um, let's mark very important uh, characteristic, physical chemical characteristic of lipids. And uh, this characteristic actually arises from the fact that, uh, that fatty, lip, fatty acids, phospholipids, sphingolipids, even cholesterol in certain way, they have polar groups in the structure. If you uh, remember the structures, we have OH groups in the structure, we have carboxyl group in the structure. So, it makes the lipid molecule bipolar. So, um, one part of the molecule is highly nonpolar or hydrophobic. That is the hydrocarbon chain or hydrocarbon part of the molecule or steroid part of the molecule. And, of course, this part of the molecule is highly insoluble in water. But on the other side, uh, you have the other part of the molecule containing this hydrophilic group, uh, OH group or COOH group, which is polar part of the molecule or hydrophilic, so it's soluble in water. So when a molecule uh, possesses those two domains, so one part of the molecule nonpolar, the other part is polar, we say that those molecules are amphipathic, so they can act as both hydrophobic or hydrophilic molecules. So this polar part of the molecule is usually smaller, it's a minor part, and it's marked as polar head, so you can see this uh, from the figure, so it's minor, it's polar, it's hydrophilic, and it's marked as head, and the nonpolar part predominates. Just imagine those uh, long hydrocarbon chains of fatty acids, which are highly nonpolar. So uh, this predominant part is marked as nonpolar or hydrophobic group, or we say nonpolar or hydrophobic tail or tails. So uh, once uh, these molecules are found in an aqueous medium. Uh, you know that the water is polar, water molecules are dipoles, then those amphipathic molecules tend to organize in a way that polar heads orient towards the uh, water dipoles and non-polar tails, they tend to get away from water, they tend to um, position somewhere in the middle of the structure as far from, uh, as far as possible from the uh, molecule, water, uh, mo molecules of water. So, uh, they can form pretty different structures. For example, they can form famous lipid B layer and uh, those uh, structures are found in all cell membranes. So, we have a B layer of phospholipids with those polar heads oriented towards the surface, aqua surface, and the non-polar tails inside the B layer. Or they can form uh, mis cells uh, in which uh, those uh, amphipathic lipid molecules are uh, oriented to form one layer, where again polar heads are going to be oriented towards the aqueous medium and non-polar tails towards the central part of the molecule. They can tend they tend to form emulsions like oil in water emulsion or they tend to form liposomes. Take a look at this very, very uh, interesting structures of liposomes. So they forming micelles, but the micelle inside the micelle with the B layer of lipids, which is fantastic. And those lipids, uh, lip liposomes are, are a nice, um, nice tool for some experiments uh, because they actually uh, looks similarly to the structure of cell membranes. So if you want to investigate certain processes in the cell membrane, you can use liposomes for in vitro studies and so on. So uh, there are a lot of possible structures. Some of those are so important, you know, uh, cell membranes and those micelles are found in the formation of those lipoprotein particles in blood, which are really of huge medical importance and so on and so on. So uh, this is the property worth memorizing and worth mentioning and that was more or less everything that I wanted to tell you about the uh, lipids and their properties so until 
uh, some other chapters, some other biomolecules. Uh, have a nice rest of the day. Thank you for being with me and bye-bye.